Another day, another round of unpleasantries between our Prime Minister and a certain royal family. This TMJ is a little boy. He is uh, stupid because he doesn't know what is happening. In fact, Malaysia's kings have been dominating our headlines over the past months. If you look closely, most of the debate is really about what our rulers can or cannot do. First, a quick history lesson. A long time ago, this piece of land held nine sovereign states, each ruled by a ruler who had absolute power. Then, the British came and slowly manoeuvred power away from the rulers into their own hands. When the British first tried to unify the Malay states under the Malayan Union, a system of governance was proposed where the powers of the Malay rulers would be greatly reduced to the point of being non-existent. And, if you know your history, you know what happened next. Malay nationalists, concerned that they were being sidelined, gained the support of the Malay rulers and strongly opposed that plan. This led the British to make concessions that, amongst others, reinstated the Malay rulers as symbolic heads of state and gave them positions, the custodian of Islam and the defender of Malays and all citizens. It's still far less power than what they used to have, but it was seen as a victory over the British and kind of elevated the Malay rulers into a symbol of Malay pride. When the British eventually granted Malaya independence, the status of Malay rulers would go on to be enshrined in the federal constitution, making them constitutional monarchs. This transition away from an absolute monarchy, which took place in stages over decades, didn't just happen in Malaysia. The conversion of absolute monarchy to constitutional monarchy is basically a reflection of the age of democracy in which we are living, the age of transparency and openness whereby all powers must be subject to some controls. It's called a constitutional monarchy because unlike an absolute monarchy, rulers' powers are defined and limited by the federal and state constitutions. If you look at the young Dipartonagong or the Sultan's power, literally, it would appear like they have unlimited arsenal of powers. But 99% of these powers must be read in the light of Article 40, Clause 1, 40 Clause 1A, which say very explicitly that the young Dipartonagong acts on advice of either the Prime Minister or of a minister authorised by the Cabinet. Conventionally, constitutional monarchs need to stay above politics. Here's why. Well, I'd put it in very blunt terms. If the royal interferes in politics, then the system of parliamentary democracy, constitutional monarchy, would be destroyed. Then what you're going to have is a situation where you would exercise power arbitrarily. All sorts of things can happen. Ordinary citizen has a piece of land, an absolute monarch can just um, seize the piece of land. And it won't just weaken democracy, it could lead to real conflict. Society will be deeply divided uh, in the sense that the royalists will probably favour the Sultan, the Democrats would favour the elected government of the day, then obviously it would be a clash of two opposing views. In all such clashes, no one wins absolutely. Both sides lose. It's a question of who loses more than the other. OK, the role of our rulers seem crystal clear then. Except not. See exhibits A through Z. Part of the problem is that their majesties have been ill-advised by some groups to interpret their constitutional powers literally and historically, not taking note of the overall imperatives of the constitution, rather than give advice which would simply be pleasing to a monarch that yes, he has absolute powers. But that's not to say a constitutional monarchy doesn't have an important role to play. While the executive or the government is the body that makes the big decisions, the royal families are the heart or conscience of Malaysia. When a laundromat owner made the controversial decision to open a Muslim-only establishment, the Sultan of Johor made it clear in no uncertain terms that he disapproved. Barat Sultan Nazrin Shah recently called for Malaysians to learn from the Christchurch shootings, saying that we need to stop sensationalising racial and religious issues. These are important statements, made more impactful by the people delivering them. I am of the view that in those areas where the constitution allows the Majlis Raja Raja to exert itself, I hope and pray they would. Religious extremism, racial extremism is on the rise and I wish their majesties would assert themselves to 
bring about a greater peace. But in issues of pure politics or economics or policy, I think their majesties have to go along with the democratic constitution that would be good both for the monarchy and for the nation. Their majesties are monarchs for everyone, not just for the Malays, not just for the Muslims, for non-Muslims as well.